Hi everyone, it's Diane with Sew Boutique and today is Fabric Friday. Today I'm going to share with you two different garment projects made with our Batik Rayon. One is an all over Batik Rayon top, which I'm wearing, and it's the McCall's 7359 pattern. It has so many different options. The second is a dress. And again, summer dresses are just my thing this year. So we're going to feature the McCall's 7862, which is really a super simple raglan sleeve style dress. And again, it has several options as well. And with this particular garment, I love the straight look of this garment and it really works well with our batik rayon that has a border and so this is the border batik of durham dreams in the shade of dusty topaz and we'll talk about that one in a second as well but first a couple of things i really 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 want to thank you all for your comments and kind words from last week's Fabric Friday where we talked about how batiks are made. It's really so much fun to share how all of this kind of comes to be. And I think from a lot of the comments that you shared with us that some of you didn't even know how all of the batiking works or really understood how the stamps are created and how the how the dyes are applied and how the wax resist works and and really the craftsmanship behind how batiks are made and um, it really was fun to put that together and thank you so much for all of your uh, kind words and appreciation for I, I think that this whole process of batik making and it will make you look at some of these fabrics and some of the projects a little differently and just keep asking questions so if you have any questions about that process or anything that you see today uh, definitely send us some questions right in the in the questions right below or the comments below um, or get on our chat on sobatique.com and ask a question we're there to answer any questions that you have um, the other thing that I wanted to also uh, bring to your attention is we're getting a lot of new followers which is really wonderful and um, I want to also let you know that on our website under the fabric so boutique fabric collection we have an option for swatches so we do this free swatch request for you um, one of the swatch items they're each an individual item so take a moment and look at those if you are unsure about a fabric or don't know if something matches a project that you're working on or just want to see every one of our uh, fabric or batik substrates. There's a pack, a simple swatch pack. We randomly pull together different fabrics from every one of our collections. So the 115 inch wide batik cotton, the 45 inch wide nuance gradation, you do get a full strip of gradation so you can kind of see how the gradation changes in color. We send you the batik rayon, jersey knit, our batik linen, our batik canvas. So you get a little flavor for everything. If you're focusing on one of those substrates, there's an item for each one of those as well and a space below in the item description where you can put in the name of the motif and the color of the fabric you'd like us to send. Add it to your shopping cart and away we go. The one thing that we do not do, and I will, I never say do not, but we, if you are ordering a fabric, let's say you're going to order a rayon and you want a swatch of a rayon and don't put the item in it, we don't send you a swatch because you're obviously seeing the rayon. But if you want a specific fabric, you have to put the name and the color of that specific fabric. Okay, let's jump into our first garment, which is the McCall's 7359 top. Let's get started with pattern number one, which is the garment that I'm wearing. And it is the Simple McCall 7359. And isn't that just the cutest top? I really love the look of 
the, the collar. It's like a shawl collar that folds around. And the ability with its design of the pattern to have a blocked color fabric selection. So a fabric on the top, fabric on the bottom, bodice portion, that's different. And also the options for a shirt tail hem, as well as a different collar and adding a cuff to your sleeve hem. So there's a lot of different options for this. And I, I just like how they have the different variations of this and also include the yardage for each one of those options. With most McCall's patterns, this is a two size range pattern. So you either select from an extra small to a medium or a large to an XXL. And really pay attention to the size ranges, the body measurements and the finished body measurements of this pattern. I would, here's what I did. I made the version, which I would call D right there <laughs> on the cover, but from one fabric. I just really love starting with one fabric, seeing how the garment is made, how does it feel, how does it look, and then making it over and over again in different fabric options. Because I will tell you, I have scraps of fabric <laughs> that are left over from, pap from projects. And I could put two different colors of lake together. I could put two different fabrics that have different motifs of twilight blue together. Um, whatever it happens to be, a red and a black that can make a really, really beautiful garment. So just use whatever you have or plan accordingly. But I started with two and a half yards of the Valhalla motif in the colorway of Spring Garden. And this is the motif of the Valhalla. And it has hints of blue in it. And I just really love the um, subtleness of the color change in this particular fabric. And I, I really love the garment and how it turned out. I also um, recommend Envy Silk. We use that as our fusible interfacing when we're working with our rayon. And then the thread that we used was actually a so fine thread that was variegated. So it has hints of the various intensities of green in it. And it just worked out beautiful for this, for this project. Um, and like I said, I made a size medium. Now, what I'd like to talk to you about is the sizing of this garment. And I'm going to jump over to a different table and lay out the pattern pieces. Um, so that we can talk about it just a little bit, but I do want to start with the garment that I'm wearing. I based everything off my finished garment measurements to make this particular garment. I would say that what you need to pay attention to on this garment is the amount of fabric that is in the top portion of the garment, different from the main body portion of the garment. This, this portion fits beautifully and it sits right at my hip and it fits nicely there. Um, but for a medium, my hip area is about a 44 and this finishes to 45 inches. So there is very little ease. And we reduce the seam allowance to be as tiny as possible to make that work. I was looking at the large when we were deciding on which size to make, but I said, let's make a medium. <laughs> so pay attention. But I feel like the top portion is a bit much. There's, there's a lot of excess fabric here that just sort of sits. So really look at your body measurements, not only your bust, because I think on a, on a pattern like this where there's a shawl collar, and there's a raglan, it's not really a raglan sleeve. The sleeve actually starts here and goes through here. It's pieced right here, going all the way across um, the front and the back. But again, I'll show you those pieces in a moment. So just pay attention to this amount of fabric. Making this again, I will sh reduce all of this to be the next size down, so a small, but keep the grading of it to be the medium here. And I think that will give me a little bit better feel for it. Now, I also made the version that has the longer sleeve and the hem on it is very small. So uh, Kathy actually made this garment, um, made the sample and worked with me on it. And she used her bias 
um, binding to finish off the hem edge because it was so tiny, as well as the bottom of the shirt. So that technique is just really, really great. And I've, I've learned so much from her every single time I work with her on a project. It's really, really great to sew with somebody um, and exchange information. Now, the one thing that I would say about this garment is that the ease is nominal, and it does recommend working with a woven fabric or a very stable, stable knit. Um, but our rayon, of course, is a woven, and so there's only about two to three inches of ease throughout this entire garment. The one thing that caught both of our eye was the fact that the measurements of the finished garment at the hip area was different between every between views A, C, and D, which is just the straight hem, compared to the shirt tail hem, okay? I have never realized this, and I don't know about you, but I never realized that when McCall's measures this, they're measuring the dip in the hem all the way around, the dip in the hem all the way around. That doesn't change your measurement of your hip. So when you're looking at this pattern and you wanna make the shirt tail, it says that the, the um, finished measurement of that shirt tail is 54 inches for a medium. And the straight hem is a 45. Well, it's using this particular pattern. It uses the same pattern piece, regardless of A, B, C, or D. So your hip measurement will always be the same regardless of the length at, if you're using the um, shirt tail version of this. So be very careful because I was thinking I had more space to work with and I did not. So that was the one thing I never really thought about that before. Um, the only time it's really mattered to me is the measurement of a dress hem. How full is your garment? I always look at that and I always take out my pattern piece and measure my hip area of a dress because that's gonna show you how straight it is or if it has fullness in any way, shape or form. Um, I just didn't realize that they measured the shirt tail different from what the hip um, measurement is when it's the same pattern piece. So let's jump over to the table. I'm going to show you each one of the pattern pieces so you know how this garment goes together. On my cutting table, I positioned each one of the pattern pieces for this garment. And as I had mentioned previously, the front here, the pattern piece that's the front bodice and the back also have the shirt tail hemline to it. So if you're making views A, B, and D, or A, C, and D, this is your... hem, which is also really your hip measurement, okay? So this is what I wanted to really share with you, is your waistline is here, and you can lengthen or shorten your bodice, but the hem itself for the shirt tail is below. And I do have to tell you that I did lengthen mine. I just remembered by looking at these pattern pieces, we did lengthen this two inches so that I could have a longer top um, let me put this right back up here again, but you see how her top is finished right kind of at her hip. I would never have, this is, I'm 5'7", and mine would have been at the upper portion of my hip if I had not lengthened it um, two inches. So just take that into consideration as well. So the hip right here on the front piece and the back piece, I'm going to move this down a little bit really is your point that you need to measure and make sure that you have the right measurement there and only look at the finished measurements of pattern pieces A, C, and D in order to get that measurement to fit this properly for you, okay? So with the, the front pattern piece here, this is where the tuck measurement is and you have to mark this on your pattern right below the center shawl collar is a center tuck, okay? And this is the back. This is the back shoulder pattern piece. 
and both on the front and the back shoulder pieces, you have your sleeve lengths, all the different sleeve lengths that you would like. Mine is the longer version that sits right above your elbow. And these pattern pieces are sewn together all the way through the bodice, through the sleeve opening, okay? So just make sure when you're working with the rayon as well, there's a lot of curves in here. Your straight of grain, because this is on the center fold, is here, okay? And so there's a lot of curves. So either consider stay stitching your pattern pieces where there is a curve once you've cut out your fabric. I actually like to do that just to make sure that everything stays in position, especially around the collar area too. Right here is your center front of the collar. The other two pieces that we have, here is the shawl collar piece. And again, our straight of grain is here. So we're cutting, um, yeah, the center back. My assumption is we're cutting two of these. No, we're cutting four of these because we have to sew it together to have a finished look. And then this pattern piece here again is our, and this is the straight of grain here is the center front facing. Okay, so it's not very many pattern pieces. It's, it, to me, that's what really makes this simple. It's just making sure that we're working with our curves properly and keeping those from stretching using your stay stitching. And that's about all. Um, the only th tricky thing that Kathy had mentioned too was working with your collar and reading the instructions more than once is that you're sewing your collar to the front of your garment and then you're turning it around and um, finishing it either with a slip stitch, like a simple hand slip stitch, or if you're really good at finishing your, um, using your sewing machine to finish those inside edges with like just a stitch in the ditch almost, you can do that as well to give it that really, really finished look. So that is this particular view and it's just really super simple to put together as long as we're not stretching and over pressing. That's the other thing that I did tell Kathy is that when we both work with rayon, I rarely use steam in my iron. I re only, I press when I need to, when it tells me to press, but it is without steam because if you put steam on your rayon, and really push it, it's gonna give that little, it's gonna do like a little bubbly look to it. We don't want that. Uh, we want it to just simply press in place and move on to the next step. So this is your McCall's 7359, and I hope you enjoy making this and take into consideration the size of your top pieces here, the shoulder pieces here, versus the size of the bodice here, when you're considering which size you should cut out for your garment. And garment number two. Garment number two is this cute dress. And I absolutely love the dress. It is McCall's 7862. And this particular pattern, let's take a look at it for a minute. This is view B and Kathy and I kind of worked through this of which size and which garment style we were going to sew for this. And Kathy did all the sewing and all the, the measuring and everything. And um, we decided on view B with only a straight hem, not the curved back hem, okay? And so it would look just like the hem of view C here. And I just have the simple sleeve. This shows grommets. There are grommets in here with lace to add an element of detail to this dress. We did not do that. <laughs> and here is a simple gathered sleeve and a long sleeve option as well. So it's got a lot of options. This pattern must be a little bit newer because it is a number system for the sizes. The size range is a six to a 22 and the measurements for the body measurements are pretty much the same across all McCall's patterns, but a six for a bust is 30 and a half. Your waist is 23 and a hip is 32 and a half. So that is the size six. 
and I believe my body measurements line up pretty well with the size between size 14 and 16 and then the size 22 is a bust of 44, a waist of 37, and a hip of 46. These measurements matter for this dress. So we have touch points, we have darts here at your bust, at your waist, and at your hip. If you base your garment measurements on your shoulder width and your bust, you're pretty much going to have a very nice loose fitting dress. There is about nine inches of ease at the waist and hip and six inches of ease around your bust. So it's supposed to be loose fitting. It's supposed to fit that way. I would give you one um, point to think about, which is the raglan sleeve. So we have a raglan sleeve in here and I am learning through um, sewing various garments and my body measurements that first of all, I don't have enough measurements. I need to start doing a little bit of measuring and adjusting for my height from my shoulders to my high bust, to my waist and to my hips. And Kathy is teaching me a little bit about all of this as well as that I just need to do a little bit of adjusting to not have a sway back in my garments and to have enough of an, of a, not as much space between my shoulder and my bust. So we're gonna talk a, a little bit about that in future um, episodes as well. And I wanna do some educational uh, videos to share what I'm going through with my garments. Um, but if, if you can see, I'm sitting here right now and I have a raglan sleeve here. This is a simple collar with hook and eye, closure at the back with just a simple slit so that you just put this on over your head. There are dot, darts as well as side pockets. So we, our kit will include the fabric, the interfacing, we use NB Silk as our interfacing because you just need a little bit of interfacing in your collar and stabilizer around your pockets. Um, and then um, the thread, we used like a really, really light blue thread from So Fine, which is a superior thread um, uh, product. And that was it. So. Let me jump back. So if I'm sitting here, um, can you see what's happening with my raglan sleeve? This is not high enough for me. And it sort of sits right in here. So I have to do some adjusting um, to either pull that up or adjust my sizing, okay? And this also has, I'm gonna stand up here. It has a, I guess you would call it a sleeve dart that is sewn to give you the shape across the top of your shoulder. Do you see that right there? So be careful with that. We don't, and follow the instructions, we want it to be a curved stitch line and not something that comes out as a point and then down. So this may need a little bit of adjusting because we did adjust it. This little spot right here, um, just be careful. It's almost like a dart. When you're sewing your dart in, you don't want it to end up with a point on it. It needs to be a simple curve to give the feeling and that rounded look, okay? But that's the same thing that's on the top of this uh, shoulder. I did not see that in the, this is the great thing about line drawings and photographs that you see on a pattern. You don't know some of the little intricacies of the patterns until you open them up and start sewing them. But we just learn how to sew them and we make our adjustments as needed. Um, but the pockets are wonderful. It's great to have a dress that has pockets and it's just a simple back. It's just so cute, so cute. Once we get all of the fit options perfect for our measurements. I was going to take you over to the table and um, actually I am. I'm gonna take you over to the table. I'm gonna show you how to lay out these pattern pieces on a directional um, fabric, just so that you can kind of understand how we do that and the difference in the yardage that is needed when we do turn our fabric and fold it without folding it, salvages to salvage, okay? Let's go over to the table. 
On the cutting table, I've positioned one of our Batik Rayon fabrics, and this is the Durham Dreams motif. So one selvage is down at the end there, and one selvage is up here. And I have folded it over as if I'm going to lay out the center back or center front piece on the fold. So this, with the dress, we want to position the fab or the pattern piece as low as possible towards the the start of that directional motif, okay? And then it will position itself going up into the hand dyed portion of this fabric, okay? So this is how we're going to lay out the pattern pieces. The, the front and back are both on the fold. I'm gonna come around to the other side over here. Let me grab the front. So when we fold the next one, we're going to fold the fabric in this way because this is our center fold of the front, okay? And you'll see the darts here. And then to get the look of the directional fabric itself, here is the sleeve piece. Let me show you this first before I position this on the fabric but there's one pattern piece for the sleeve here, and this is the, the short sleeve that we used for my garment, and then there's also the long sleeve, which has pleat positioning down at your cuff to finish that off beautifully. It's really a cute design. I think this would be really cute as a long, long sleeve dress as well. So here at the top of the sleeve is where we have a dart. And it's really, I don't know if you call that a dart or just a join, but you have to be very careful when you're stitching this together to make sure, I'm gonna lift this up a little bit, that we don't have a point. We wanna curve this to finish off that seam, okay? This pattern piece gets positioned up on the top portion of the fabric, and I'm gonna pull this down so you can see that portion, actually I'm gonna raise this up a little bit. You see that? So we wanna put the sleeve up where the hand dyed portion of this fabric is. And if you can, it's nice to position your arm openings or where the join is going to be between the sleeve and the front and back of the garment at that same position. Because if there is any motif showing up in there, we want it to look like it's just simply a continuation of the garment. We have pocket pieces. I'm gonna drop this back down again. We have pocket pieces that you can then cut from any portion of the remaining fabric. I would probably cut this, and as we did for our garment, out of the hand dyed portion at the top because that's really where we have a little bit of leftover fabric. And then we also have two pattern pieces and I do not have the other one out here. We have the collar, which we can cut out of the hand dyed portion of the fabric, as well as there is a hem facing. Now, what we did with this garment that I'm wearing is something I probably will not do next time. We cut the hem facing out of a portion of the border running across the lower selvage. And I think that reduces the length that you can have for your garment. Instead, we should be cutting our hem facing out of the remaining fabric from the hand dyed portion of this fabric, because then you can use up more of that fabric and use less of the yardage in general and only need as, you will only need as much fabric as the fullness of your garment here, plus the positioning of two sleeves right at the, the other selvage edge. And I'll do all the math for you on that, but you use less fabric when you're using the full width of the 45 inch wide fabric for your garment. So that's a little bit about how this garment is actually laid out and then the simple you know following the pattern instructions for sewing up your garment that is very simple we have a back 
we have a front on the fold, we have four pocket pieces, we have a hem facing, a collar facing, and two sleeves. I hope you enjoyed following along as we go through and introduce two different garment patterns. The McCall 7862, which is the dress I'm wearing, which is so simple, raglan sleeve, and um, very, very, a lot of options for you for your sleeves. It's a simple dress that you can use over and over again, whether it be summer with the short sleeves or cooler weathers with a long sleeve. And the pockets, you gotta have the pockets. Um, the next one, of course, is our uh, summer top, which we did in the Batik Rayon. This is the Valhalla motif in the colorway of spring green. And this is McCall's 7359. And again, a lot of options for this one too. So if you have some fabric at home that you wanna do a color block or you wanna have a different shawl collar fabric from the main garment um, fabric, so many options. And we will have kits on our website for both garments. So you can buy your perfect rayon, whether it be a directional fabric or not, for the dress and the top. And the garment kits will include the fabric of your choice, the interfacing, any other notions. I think this one will have the hook and eyes in it. There's no other notions for the top. Um, and your option to buy the pattern with or without. We know that a lot of people have some of these patterns. We don't want you to not buy the kit simply because you have the pattern. So if you have the pattern, don't add it to your cart. We just want to make sure that all the options are available for you. So shoot some questions our direction. Did everything make sense? Any other ideas that you might have for things that, um, if you've worked on these garments before too, things that might you'd like to share with everybody. And um, I wanna provide an update. Last week when we did our video on how batiks are made, we talked a little bit at the end about the inventory. Our inventory, um, our shipments that is coming in has cleared customs and it will be here soon. <laughs> so we are as anxiously waiting the shipment as I'm sure you are. And once it arrives, we will get everything processed and sent out to you. We have a lot of new items that will be added to our website as well. So if it comes midweek ne next week, we'll see what our Fabric Friday will be for the end of next week. But we are working on a lot of projects. My goal is to work and share with you a few new by Annie canvas bags. And um, so it's either going to be inventory updates or it's going to be by Annie canvas bags. So stay tuned and until then have a wonderful fabric friday and enjoy your weekend and keep sewing smiling and sharing <laughs>